Yeah. Well, what about the Franciscans? Because hasn't there been these all those jokes about Dominicans and Franciscans and the, and the infighting? Right. Well, talk a bit about that. <laughs> like, um, is there? I mean, because you don't know much about the Carmelites, but pre- you said that. I didn't say that. You said. That. But um, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, bloody hell. I guess we'll move on. Um, <laughs> but presumably, you know a bit about the history between the Dominicans and the Franciscans, obviously orig- originating for similar reasons yeah. around the same time. But um, as far as the the disagreements. Okay. So I'd say um, the kind of difference between Franciscans and Dominicans is. Uh, some of it's historical, just based on the origins of the two different orders, and then some of it's more philosophical, theological. So I think that historically they grew up out of different movements within the church. So St. Dominic was a canon, mm-hmm. which is to say he was a priest and he was a religious, a kind of monk right. of the cathedral. And so Dominican life always has a kind of clerical shape, and there's a real emphasis put on um, sacramental ministry and on the preaching, uh, specifically like pulpit preaching. Mm-hmm. Whereas it seems that the Franciscan movement kind of grew out of the penitential life. Yeah. Um, so which would have been a lay movement. And you, you encounter this in a variety of forms in the 13th and 14th century, like the Beguines. But uh, oftentimes there were people who would follow maybe a charismatic preacher, but they would adopt a life of strict penance as a mm. way of conforming themselves to the Lord. But they were typically not permitted to preach except by moral exhortation because typically they didn't have the kind of education right. that would give them the scope for preaching. Now, things have changed, you know, and, and Franciscans yeah. get just as much education as do Dominicans. Yeah. But then, of Anthony Padua, Bonaventure. Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, but those um, but those kind of tendencies still obtain within the order. Mm. And so the Franciscans tend to be less clerical. So there are more Franciscans would not be ordained priests than Dominicans, most of whom are ordained priests historically. Um, and then they tend to have more of an emphasis on uh, the life of, well, this is, this is, yeah, you could describe this in a billion ways, but yeah. um, they're, they're, there's a big emphasis on their fraternity, right? And then I guess Dominicans, yeah. you would say there's a big emphasis on the pastoral fatherhood. And then with the Dominicans, there's, there's this kind of like moral exhortation, but that it's principally expressed through the common life of the brethren and their dependence upon God is exhibited in poverty. And mm-hmm. then in Dominicans, um, that there wouldn't be the same emphasis, right? But there would be instead this kind of preaching apostolate and the life of study that would uh, be requisite for and sanctifying of. So that's a lot of words, but here's like a, a kind of summary thought. I, I went to Franciscan University of Steubenville and I you know lived there and benefited from the witness and the life of the Franciscans, for which I am very grateful, and also from their preaching. Mm. And I can tell you that I know a lot about St. Francis because of their preaching, whereas mm. I don't really know much about St. Dominic from the preaching of the brethren, because mm. Franz, Francis looms large in their tradition, mm. and specifically his desire for evangelical radicality. He wanted to be an evangelical man in a way that just def- almost defies imitation. And so like a lot of people say like, oh, the Franciscans are always splitting up. They're so fractious. <laughs> but when, you're, when, you're, when your model is St. Francis and you want to live by his rule and his testament, mm. by an ideal put in such stark form, then it's quite natural that you would always have this tendency towards an evangelical Reform. perfection. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Whereas in the Dominicans, um, you know, St. Dominic was kind of like more, I suppose, more modest in the, um, I mean that, like in yeah, both senses, yeah. more modest in the ideal that he proposed. And it's it's kind of accommodated to, yeah, like a good friar, but not a great friar. So he demands of you a certain, you know, you have to step up, right? But um, there he, he kind of affords space for the creeping mediocrity of man while still encouraging one to a life that is radical. I asked a Dominican once, uh, why why are there so many splits in the Franciscan order and not the Dominicans? And he said kind of what you just said, that uh, the Franciscans follow Francis, we follow the rule of St. Dominic. Right, yeah, that's and a good summary. the person is much more interpretable. Sure. Mm. Yeah, so so St. Saint- St. Francis, the owner of the Pavarello, Our Lady's Juggler, you know, he's, he, or Our Lady's Tumbler, I think is what St. Um, Saint okay. G.K. Chesterton calls him, oh, right. right? He like describes him as like um, making somersaults and then seeing the world upside down. And in so seeing it, he sees it as it is, you know, for <laughs> like what, what to us seem great achievements, like yeah. tall towers right. and excellent edifices are actually just clinging to the surface of the earth as they teeter above the void. Wow. So St. Thomas in his, in his radical humility, excuse me, St. Saint, Saint Francis in his radical humility saw things as they were. Um, and he lived his life with that kind of reckless abandon. Mm. Uh, G.K. Chesterton tells a story where he was minding his father, Pietro Bernardoni's cloth booth, mm. and that a poor man came That's and right. asked him for alms, and he kind of held him off for a second while he finished a transaction. That guy left, and he was 
just um, astonished at his callousness. And so he took up all the earnings from the day and plunged through the streets of Assisi, mm-hmm. found that man and bestowed upon him all his riches. And Chesterton says something like, and he has an, and, he, and he never ceased careening from that point on. Mm-hmm. So there's a kind of careening spirit in the Franciscan order. Yeah. Which is awesome and is like meant to be of service and of inspiration to the universal church. This so is I, one of the beautiful things I love about the Catholic Church. I mean, when you look yeah. at orthodoxy, they have there's not religious orders. There's the monks and then there's the priests. And I suppose prior to the mendicant orders, there was far fewer orders as well. Yeah. But um, it's kind of beautiful to have these different expressions responding to different things, I think. Yeah. It's, it's, it feels like it's much more engaging with the world and the issues of the world to bring all to Christ. Yeah. But no, I so yeah. I, I certainly like, and sometimes it can sound like overly ironic and patronizing to say like, I love everyone and everyone's great. <laughs> but, but for whatever reason in my own life, uh, the Lord made his will known through men of different religious congregations. Yeah. So I had, you know, great mentors at Steubenville who were Franciscans. Uh, the summer that I got excited about being becoming, becoming a priest, the one place where I went often for mass and adoration, because it was like the only place in Portland, Maine, where I could find adoration, was a Jesuit father, recently ordained, Father Matthew Monick, who's a gem. You should right. have him on the show. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like, I mean, and then I would used to go on Wednesday nights in Kennebunk, Kennebunk Maine, to this monastery of Franciscans who were from, I want to say like Lithuania, one of those three countries, like Lithuania, Latvia, or Estonia. But they sounded like Count Dracula, and so they'd be like, the blood of Christ. Yeah. Like, Whoa. <laughs> Um, but so I, I, just, I just had the witness of these different men in my life that really wanted me to, you know, like kind of encourage me to think about it, but yeah. to become a Dominican. And the only Dominican that I had met at that point was St. Thomas in a book. So, mm. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you will absolutely love the full interview. So click right there to enjoy the whole thing. Also, a big thanks to these groups who made that interview possible. Learn more in the show notes below about these guys. They're absolutely incredible and honored to have them as sponsors. Oh, and also, if you haven't subscribed yet, click subscribe and then that bell button. That way, YouTube will be forced to let you know when we put out more content.